Hey, welcome back to another restoration video. It's a uh, Giant Sedona 991. Uh, yeah, gonna be some tips and stuff along the way. I'll put the timestamps for the sections in the description below. I uh, hope that helps. Hope you enjoy. Cheers. All right, here's the bike I got at Facebook Marketplace. Um, it was actually on eBay. This little bike was on eBay for sale, but I couldn't get it because it was in Tasmania. So when this one popped up, I jumped on it straight away. And yeah, it was pretty close to my house, so it was uh, it was an easy get. Uh, yeah, when I got the bike, it was a little bit bigger than expected, but uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. All right, got the bike back. Uh, here it is. So yeah, it had a, it had a, a flat tire, I think, so I just kind of wheeled it home. The headset was pretty creaky straight away. I noticed that it didn't turn that well. And then when I tried shifting the gears on both sides, it just didn't work. I didn't force on anything. I just knew I'd fix those. Um, yeah, but everything seemed pretty cool. Just a few scratches here and there. No dents or anything, so that's good. Rust, of course. 400 LX Xage cranks and rear derailleur. Um, I think that's mid range, um, but yeah, everything else seemed pretty good. I think this bike has a really cool paint job. It has kind of like a splatter paint job, and I think it's going to clean up really good. I had some scratches here on the frame, you can see, and then had these kind of two marks on the top. I don't know whether it's been hung up somewhere or it's been scratched or if it's some type of paint dripped on it so i have to figure that out yeah the cassette was uh, in pretty good condition so that's good uh back wheel was uh raya rx7 to xh hub and the front was joytake to zac 18. cables all rusted through so i have to replace those chroma frame i thought the graphics were pretty cool here pretty cool uh Cool typography, kind of the old 90s graphics with the, that fluoro orange. Some of the cables were cracked, so I'm gonna have to replace those. Yeah, you can see it's from Melbourne. Try to keep that on there. Big fat uh, velo gel seat there, uh, but yeah, not too bad of a pickup, I think. All right, breaking down the bike. Uh, yeah, so thanks to everyone who gave me the tips of uh, taking off the. The pedal first, I always seem to forget that, but um, yeah, it worked, worked pretty easy this time. Uh, yeah, I don't think I had too much trouble taking anything off the bike. Yeah, the seat, seat post came out, wasn't stuck, nothing really. Uh, once again, I think just the cranks, yeah, the cranks are fine actually this time, not a problem at all. Um, so I took those off pretty easy, pretty stoked about that. Yeah, I say the only thing when I was taking off the cranks, I kind of like banged my thumb a little bit. Um, yeah, you can see in the video, um, but yeah, I guess just my tip, just be careful. <laughs> um, and then just, yeah, yeah, I just lay out all the parts. Um, I think if you lay out the parts, it makes it easy to keep track of what you need to do, what you need to clean, so you don't lose anything. Um, taking off the bottom bracket, I was pretty rusted up, um, so it took a bit of effort, but I just used WD-40 and it came off. Uh, yep, clean the frame. There was some uh, paint bits on the frame which was super hard to get off. Um, I just used WD-40 and just scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed and it went away slowly. Uh, and for the top I decided to use T-Cut because it's just taking ages and I was going to T-Cut the frame anyway but uh, T-Cut is basically a color restorer. I think it takes off a very slight layer on the top top coat of your frame and it gets rid of any oxidization and uh, small scratches stuff like that so yeah just using t-cut eventually just after going over it it uh it eventually got rid of those paint bits so i was pretty stoked on this because i thought it could have been like a, a dent or a scratch um so I'm, I'm glad the original paint was uh was underneath and it worked out well yeah, so from there, I basically took out the whole frame. Um, yeah, and I think it, it turned out turned out pretty good. Uh, yeah, a little tip: um, just make sure you turn the frame upside down to take out the bottom as well. Forget about that. But yeah, I think the frame turned out amazing. Uh, looks really good. All right, trying to fix the shifters here. So yeah, they didn't work that well. So what I did was basically just uh, took off took off the shell and then. Just put WD-40 in them, just kind of soaked them in WD-40, scrubbed them with a, a brass brush just to get rid of uh, all the gunk, and then I uh, just re-lubed them and then they ended up working pretty well. 
if uh, WD forty doesn't work for you, uh, what we can do is actually table the pieces apart and then clean each piece. Uh, that's what I did for my Marin video. Um, so if you want to Take a look at that, you can check it out there. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it. It worked pretty well. Yeah, if you're wondering where I get those little green trays from, uh, came from Coles, from these little red eat meals. Uh, but yeah, they're pretty handy to clean bolts and stuff, so a little tip there for you. All right, clean the parts. Uh, so what I did here first was just take off all the bolts because uh, I'm gonna soak them in white vinegar. Um, so any rusted bolts, I put that in, put that separate. And then just to wash the parts, it's just uh, hot soapy water, uh, dishwashing detergent. You can use degrees as well. That seems to work well. And either a nylon brush or a brush, brass brush. Um, and yeah, that's it. They just give them a good rundown. Uh, make sure to re re -lube your parts, your moving parts, and uh, that's basically it. Uh, a little tip here is when you're washing the sink, just make sure you use a strainer, otherwise it's real easy to lose bolts and stuff, so don't, don't do that. Um, yeah, and if you use a little plastic tray here, what I like to do is just lay all the parts out so uh, you can keep track of everything. All right, clean the bolts. Uh, so what I use is a little uh, boost juice bottle, put all the bolts in, fill it up with vinegar. You just cover it uh, with a little bit extra. I use white vinegar from Coal. Pretty, uh, works pretty well. It's only $1.60 for two liters. So I think that's pretty good. Leave it in there for eight hours. Shake it every now and then. I actually left mine in for 24 hours because I forgot about it. Um, and then once you come out, just make sure you scrub them with a rust brush. Use WD-40 so they don't rust again. A uh, little warning, just make sure you keep the lid off because one time uh, I th think I filled it up about three quarters of the way and just sealed the lid up tight. And then we heard a loud bang and the lid actually popped off. So yeah, be careful about that. Uh, yeah, cleaning the rest of the parts. So yeah, see wasn't too bad. Just use WD-40 to get rid of the stains and then just some hand soap and moisturizer to kind of finish it up. That was pretty it. Um, and then the stem, WD-40 with the brass brush again, get rid of all the rust, uh, worked pretty well. And then for the seat post, uh, yeah, just detergent again, um, warm water, but you can see the seat post here is pretty pretty rough. I think it used to be black, but then there was a bunch of scratches on it. So I used 240 grit sandpaper to sand it down. And then to refine it, I used 400. Um, I actually tried 400 first to see if it worked, but then, yeah, it was taking too long. So I just ended up using 240, it was way easier. Um, and then, yeah, and then just uh, a little bit of WD-40 once again to seal it. Um, and then that's it. Cleaning up the pedals here. They're pretty trash, but we'll see how they go. Oh uh, yeah, cleaning the wheels. Uh, pretty straightforward here. Just use a use a brass brush or a nylon brush to clean it. Use the greaser. Use a little bit warm water detergent. Um, and then just to clean in the cassette, what I do is I fold a, a fold a piece of cloth in half, and then you just slide it in between. Or the cogs and it, it turns out it turns out pretty well all right i thought i was already build but i had to clean up the the headset caps and the bottom bracket just yeah just use a wd-40 wire brush for the bottom bracket just clean it out and that's it all right bike build so yeah just putting just make sure you grease everything up as you put it in uh it's pretty straightforward putting on the forks here putting on the bottom bracket um yeah, for, for these older style bottom brackets, you just got to make sure uh, it's not overly tight and it's not too loose. Um, you'll get a feel for this as you do do some, but basically what you want to do is just have it spin freely without any play. And yeah, that's it. Yeah, putting on the cranks here, you just make sure you grease those up. Yeah, just putting on all that different parts, putting on the wheels. Here you can kind of get a first look at what the bike's going to look like. Yeah, pretty hyped on it already. I need some grips, so I had these leftover Odyssey grips from the last project, um, and I just cut them down basically. Use a and pair of scissors, easy. Just putting on the levers and grips on here. Yeah, water works pretty well, and once it dries, the grips don't move at all, so that works for me. Um, and I think yeah, the Odyssey grips looks 
looks pretty cool. Uh, yeah, just putting on the cantilever brakes here. Um, you just got to work out which way, which way the spring goes. Um, you can also find uh, you can find diagrams online as well if you if you can't work it out. So that's always that's always helpful. Uh, here I just reused the housing. The housing was pretty good. I replaced the ones that were cracked, and then and yeah, I didn't actually have to cut all new new housing, which is good. Good for the environment. Yep. Uh, yeah, here putting on the gear cables. Um, just make sure you stretch them out before you put them in, kind of like a guitar string. Um, otherwise, if you go on a couple first couple of rides, you're gonna lose tension in your gears or your brakes, and then you'll have to reset them up. Um, just kind of helps avoid that. Uh, setting up the cantilever brakes here. Basically, what you want to do is set up the pads so they're so they're perpendicular to the wheel. And then what I like to do is just make sure the brake pad is far away from the little bolt there, so you get a little bit more leverage. Uh, and then what I and what I do on the on the front is just back it off uh, a bunch. And when you put the brake cable in, you just hold the the brake pads against the rim, tighten down the the brake cable, and then you release it at the lever. And that's it. it. Should work out pretty well. And then yeah, the same with the front brakes. Pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, sometimes. They can be a little bit tricky, but if you yeah, just try the method I said, and it should work out pretty well. Um, here, put on the chain. Yeah, not nothing too difficult there. All right, cutting the brake cables. Um, just showing you the way I do it. I like it so it kind of folds in and sits on that little lever there. Um, I think it looks pretty clean like that, so that's kind of what I do. Just measure it out, and then you just cut it. Uh, just cutting all those cables, finishing it up. Um, yeah, you're indexing the gears here. Uh, yeah, if you're doing this for the first time, it could be pretty difficult. Um, there is a a cool Park Tools uh, video that shows you how to do it. Uh, makes it pretty easy, and then once you learn it, it's not uh, yeah, it's not that hard. Um, but yeah, once you get it all running smoothly, it feels feels pretty good. Uh, yeah, I want to show you how it sounds, but it's been uh, super windy. Uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, just putting on the pedals here. Uh, I ended up switching the pedals out because they didn't really spin that well. And then I replaced the, the saddle as well, just for a turbo saddle. Um, yeah, and here is the old bike and this new one.
All right, that's the video. Super hype we had turned out. Uh, yeah, rides really well. Feels a feels a little bit like a motorbike actually, just because uh, I guess the seats uh lower and the handlebars a little bit higher but yeah it rides pretty fun yeah if any uh tips or any any comments for me um yeah leave them down below yeah stay tuned for the next video thanks thanks for watching